Hi, you are now with Tom Se. Do you ever feel impatient when queuing up in a supermarket or experience breathing difficulty in a crowd? How can these problems be solved? Supermarket may set up one counter, two counters, three, four, five, and six counters to cut down the queue. So the system with many counters could help this problem. Eh hey. So what's the relationship between setting up counters with biology? If there are more counters, the crowd is less, so we can breathe easily. Today, Thomson is going to talk about the respiratory system in humans and animals. Before learning, do not forget to subscribe this channel, like and share this video. Well, let's see what you will learn in the next 15 minutes. I'm going to talk about the respiratory system and respiratory organs of various animals together with their respiratory structure for gaseous exchange. And I also talk about the structural adaptations of this structure and last but not least, the breathing mechanisms of different animals. Lungs are the main respiratory organ in humans. Now, Kiss the air as how you kiss your lover, because you can't survive without air and lover. During inhalation, air is inhaled through the nose, it passes through the pharynx, larynx, trachea, and branched into two lungs through the bronchus. In the lungs, the bronchus are branched into smaller tubes known as bronchioles. Each bronchiole ends with a cluster of air sacs known as alveolus. Breathing mechanism is added by a sheet of skeletal muscle known as the diaphragm and the ribcage. The human respiratory structure is the alveolus, also known as alveoli in plural. Alveoli resemble branches of ribs. In the lungs, there are numerous alveoli that provide large total surface area for gaseous exchange. The surface of alveoli is moist to dissolve the respiratory gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide. Alveoli is covered by the network of blood capillary for rapid diffusion of gas. The wall of alveolus is thin for the rapid diffusion of gases. Now, follow me to breathe. Breathe in and breathe out. You feel that your ribcage is moving up and down, in and out. The movement of ribcage is controlled by the contraction and relaxation of intercostal muscles that are attached to the ribs. The internal intercostal muscles and the external intercostal muscles are antagonistic, whereby one relax, another contract. Now, let's investigate how a human inhales. During inhalation, the internal intercostal muscles relax, whereas the external intercostal muscles contract. The contraction and relaxation of these muscles causes the ribcage to move outwards and upwards. Meanwhile, the diaphragm contracts and becomes flattened. Now, the volume of thoracic cavity increases and its pressure decreases. As we know in physics, the volume is inversely proportional to its pressure. The higher atmospheric pressure forces the air into the lungs. During exhalation, the external intercostal muscles relax, whereas the internal intercostal muscles contract. This causes the ribcage to move inwards and downwards. Meanwhile, the diaphragm relaxes and curves upwards just like a dome. Now, the volume of the thoracic cavity decreases and its pressure increases. This high pressure forces the air out of the lungs. The respiratory system of the insects is also known as the trachea system. There are many openings called spiracles on both sides of the thorax and abdomen in the insects. The trachea system is composed of air tubes called trachea. There are many air sacs to speed up the movement of gases to and from 
the tissues of insects. Each trachea is finely divided into tracheoles, the respiratory structure of the insects. At the end of the trachea contains numerous tracheoles that provide large total surface area for gaseous exchange. The surface of the trachea is moist to dissolve the gases, and the wall of trachea is thin for the rapid diffusion of gas. In humans, the breathing mechanism is controlled by the diaphragm and the ribcage. However, in insects, the rhythmic movement of the abdominal muscles control the breathing mechanisms. Wow, to have six packs of abdominal muscle, you do learn from the grasshoppers. Let's see how beautiful the body shape of the grasshopper is. On both sides of the thorax and the abdomen, there are numerous openings called sparkles. During inhalation, the abdominal muscles of the insects relax. This reduces the pressure inside the trachea. The higher atmospheric pressure forces the air to be drawn in through sparacles. During exhalation, the abdominal muscles of the insects contract. Now, the pressure in the trachea increases and causes the air to be drawn out from sparacles. Gills are the respiratory organs of fish. Gills are covered by operculum on both sides. When the operculum is removed, there are four pairs of gills, with four gills on each side. A gill has gill arch that supports the tiny structure known as the gill filaments. In each gill, there are many gill filaments. And in each gill filament, there are many projections known as lamella, the respiratory structure in the fish. There are numerous lamella and gill filaments to provide large total surface area for gaseous exchange. In the lamella, there is a network of blood capillary for the rapid diffusion of respiratory gases. And the wall of the lamella is thin enough for the rapid diffusion of gas. Since fish lives in water, the gills are hydrated and moist to dissolve the gases. At the anterior end of the fish, there is a buccal cavity and an opercular cavity. Since fish lives in water, oxygen is dissolved in the water and is drawn through the mouth of the fish. Gaseous exchange takes place in the gills and water is drawn out from the opercular. Now let's observe the flow of blood and the flow of water through the lamella. The flow of blood and the flow of water are in the opposite direction, and this is known as the counter current exchange. This counter current exchange maximizes the transfer of oxygen as water flows over the gills, whereby oxygen diffuses from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration through simple diffusion. During inhalation, the fish open its mouth. Now, the floor of the buccal cavity is lowered and the opercular cavity enlarges. Meanwhile, the operculum closes and this causes the pressure of the buccal cavity to be decreased. Now, the water is drawn into the fish through the mouth. The events in exhalation are totally different from inhalation. During exhalation, the fish closes its mouth and the floor of buccal cavity is raised up. Now, the opercular cavity becomes smaller and causes the pressure in the cavity to be increased. The operculum opens and water is drawn up from the operculum. Adult frogs have two respiratory structures, the skin and the lungs. Frogs use skin to respire when they are in the water and when they are inactive and hibernating. The skin of the frog is thin enough so that the gas can diffuse rapidly. And the skin is moist to dissolve the respiratory gases. Beneath the skin, there is a network of blood capillary for the rapid diffusion of gases. Frogs use lungs to breathe when they are on the land. 
A frog has buccal pharyngeal cavity. The floor of buccal pharyngeal cavity is composed of strong muscles to support breathing mechanism. A frog also has folded lungs. The wall of the lungs is thin for the rapid diffusion of gas. As the lungs are folded, they provide large total surface area for gaseous exchange. The lungs are moist to dissolve the respiratory gases and the lungs have a network of blood capillary so that the gas can diffuse rapidly. You see, the frog is breathing now. When a frog inhales, its mouth and glottis are closed, lowering the flow of buccal pharyngeal cavity. The volume of buccal pharyngeal cavity increases and causes the air pressure inside the cavity to be decreased. Now, air is drawn in through the nostrils. Once the air fills in the buccal pharyngeal cavity, the glottis opens and the nostrils close. Now, the flow of buccal pharyngeal cavity is raised up and the air pressure in the cavity increases. This high pressure pushes the air into the lungs. During the exhalation of frogs, the folded lungs contract and the air is forced out from the lungs to the buccal pharyngeal cavity. Now, air is drawn out through the nostrils. However, some are mixed with the air in the buccal pharyngeal cavity. Okay, let's do a recap regarding to what you learned from this video. Different animals have different respiratory structures. In humans, the structures are named the alveoli. In insects, the structures are known as frogules. In fish, the gill filaments and lamella are the respiratory structures. And in frogs, skin and folded lungs are the structures. The respiratory structures have different characteristics in order to adapt to gaseous exchange. The surface of these structures is moist to dissolve gases and they have thin wall and network of blood capillary for rapid diffusion of gases. And lastly, they are numerous in numbers to increase the total surface area for gaseous exchange. This explains why supermarkets have set up so many counters to cut down the queue so we can breathe easily. Okay. Don't forget, subscribe this channel, like and share this video to your friends.